This is such an interesting testicle. So we've got the titan of the electric car world, the Tesla Model 3. Against the seal from BYD, who you've probably never heard of. Mm. So which one would we take home, right? If you could only take one of them home, should we do the thing? Okay, let's do the thing. Okay. Right, so I'll say one, two, three, and then yeah. we both shout out our answer. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Hey there, electrifiers. So I'm on my way to pitch this, the new Tesla updated Model 3, up against a rather interesting competitor. And the challenger would be this, the BYD Seal, a car from a company that you might not have heard of. But BYD actually builds more cars with plugs than Tesla does quite a stat that isn't it and interestingly it builds batteries that it sells to Tesla to put into its cars this is gonna be a good one really good now the main reason this car hit the headlines is because of one thing that they took away and that is the indicator sticks yeah instead of an indicator stick you now have indicator buttons <laughs> which um, <laughs> yep which which Ginny has turned into fart noises. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hello, good journey. Fart noises, Ginny. <laughs> you turned my indicators into <laughs> fart noises. Right okay. done, right done. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, that was funny. It's actually quite funny. And actually, I kind of, I got used to the indicators in the end, so that was nice. This looks lovely. Do you say, just before we crack on to these two cars, yeah. you got used to the indicators in the Model 3. Yeah, I did, Oh, yeah. we're so coming back to that later. Okay. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this is a great twin test, I think. Mm. So we've got this car, Tesla Model 3. Literally, they are all over the place. Everybody knows what they are against the BYD Seal, which is a car that I'm guessing quite a lot of our audience might not have heard of. Well, here's the thing. I'm, I'm just excited as you are, because I think when it comes to Tesla, there's been lots of competition, but I don't think... Uh, many of them have quite ticked all of the boxes. Maybe the, the maybe the BMW i4. Oh yeah, that is better. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to put the BYD seal up against the Tesla because I think this stands a good chance of being a bit better. <gasps> okay, it's a big statement. It's a big statement. Let's crack on and see what we think. So outside, let's talk about the looks. Right. Can I start you with? You start with this. Uh, one thing that I like about the Tesla. So we have a new light design, which I think looks very snazzy at the back. The lights are now like a C shape, yeah. which looks very nice. Instead of the badge, you now have Tesla written across the back, which again looks very smart. And I have to give a shout out to the charge port that's hidden under the lights. The, so char looks the charge port is great, isn't yeah. it? I think that's one of my favourite charge ports along with the Audi e-tron. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Um, OK. The great thing about the BYD is that it doesn't have its name on the back anymore <laughs> because they've taken it off. It had Build Your Dreams on other models. And I think it's brilliant that they just went, OK, well, that doesn't work for Europe, so we'll take it off. So it's like quite nice and clean. But I do love that lovely um, light strip that runs all the way along the rear tailgate. Mm -hmm. I think that looks very, very nice. I just think this looks like a nicer designed thing. Like it looks like this has been designed, whereas this looks a bit like it's come out of a mould. Perhaps, that's yeah. my thought on that. Yeah. Um, I love the pop-out um, door handles on the seal that have BYD written on them. I just think it makes it look kind of quite plush and expensive looking. I know these lights are new, but they're much nicer, sorry. And this, these. Yeah, those are great, that's aren't they? That's lovely. Those are, so I think overall, look, looks are in the eye of the beholder and all that. But for me, the seal is a much nicer car to look at. Nicer wheel design as well, I'm going to throw that out there. Okay, are we agreeing on this? Yeah, I think we are. Mm, doesn't happen often. I know. <laughs> okay, so in here it is classic minimalistic Tesla, isn't it? I mean, you do have a new 15.4 inch screen. I know it's the same size as before, but this is more intuitive. And honestly, you press it, it's instant. Everything you press is so, so intuitive and just picks up on everything that you want to do. Like, I find that really, really impressive. You also have a new 8-inch screen in the back here for your passengers. Very nice. No plastic here. This is now aluminium or aluminium, as the Americans would say. And under here you have some storage. OK, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the lack of indicator stalks. But it also means that selecting your gears 
is not here anymore. It's now here. So if you want to drive forwards, press a little car, move it forwards. You want to reverse, press a little car, reverse it back. That also takes a lot of getting used to. This isn't the kind of car that you're going to learn how to use in five minutes. It's a bit like, you know, when you get a new telly and then you stay there for ages going, what's that to? What's that to? You're going to do a lot of that as soon as you get in here. But actually, the more you press, the more you play around, the more you get used to it. Seats in the back, it's actually quite spacious, so your kids or your passengers in the back will be quite happy, especially with that screen back there. And in the boot, you've got 594 litres of space. Very nice. Plus an extra 88 litres in the front. That is way more than the BYD seal. Look, all in all, it's very futuristic in here. I mean, you don't get a key, you get a card or you get the app that you can have on your phone. It's all very very snazzy futuristic robot car that's what it is it's all right isn't it okay let's have a look around the seal shall we it's obviously much busier in here than in nicola's model 3 it is as if the interior design team said right what's the exact polar opposite that we can do to the model 3 and then they came up with this because it's just got a lot more going on hasn't it I do actually like it and I surprise myself with that. I think it's uh, quite a nice place to be. Not least because the, in the interior materials are uh, really nice quality and the build quality is excellent in here. So like the Tesla, it's all focused around this big screen here in the centre. It's a 15.6 inch touchscreen. Um, the interface on it just isn't quite as nice as the Tesla's, if I'm honest, and it doesn't do as many sort of, you know, tricks and you can't have a fire and it certainly doesn't have a whoopee cushion in it, but it does all the functions that you need to do. And then you've got this smaller screen in front of you here that's got all the stuff that you need in the driver's eye line. Then you've got buttons on the steering wheel and you've got indicators. Who'd have thought an indicator? Yes. Here around um, the gear selector, oh yeah, gear selector rather than swiping on a screen, that's novel, isn't it? Um, but you've got quick controls there for your climate control, the different driving modes and your volume. I just think it's all very intuitive. The screen does a party trick as well, look at this. Look, honestly, you're gonna use that a lot? Probably not, but it's kind of quite a nice party trick if you want to do. One thing that is a bit irritating though is that because like the Tesla, quite a lot of the functions are in the screen, um, you've got to go into the climate control and really mess around in a sub menu in order to get the heated seats and the heated steering wheel on. I would just love it if there were some easy buttons um, that allowed you to do that. Um, what else to say? Storage is good. I really like this kind of little sub storage compartment under there. Look, it might be a bit too chintzy in here for some of you. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's going to love the crystal gear selector, although I quite like it. Um, like less the BYD in the headrest. I think that's a bit more of an acquired taste. But, you know, I think overall this is a really nice place to be. If you go into the back, you have actually got loads of space. Um, headroom doesn't feel quite as good with this panoramic sunroof. Um, and also, if you are tall, which I am not, and you have long legs, which I do, but only for my size, I have a feeling that when the screen is in its um, correct position, you may well find yourself just catching, clipping the knee on it. But I think that's only going to be an issue if you're an awful lot taller than me. Other than that, boot space isn't quite as good as that on the Model 3, and the frunk is a bit smaller too. So that wins on space, but I think on just a nice, cosy place to be, this interior definitely wins on that. The indicator buttons takes a bit of getting used to. I think I'm used to it now, but I'll be honest, if you're driving in the UK, you'll find yourself on a lot of windy roads. So your steering wheel is upside down very often. And then <laughs> it takes a moment for you to go, what way do I press? How do I? What, what, what? So, it takes a bit of thinking to figure out which way you're indicating when the steering wheel was upside down. Which I know that has really annoyed Ginny. <laughs> like, she, she really doesn't like it. I'm okay with it, but Ginny's not happy about it at all. I think that's probably the only thing that we disagree on. Apart from that, we agree on most things. I would say the ride in this, I think I prefer the BYD. I mean, look, they have they have improved this. There is an improvement here with the updated version. 
I mean, the old one used to be uh, quite buzzy at times and the road noise used to be quite loud, but it still is loud compared to the BYD seal. You still can hear the road noise quite noisily. It's not as refined as I want it to be. It's not as refined as the seal. It's, it's not. And the seats aren't as comfortable. I'm trying to find things that's going to make this better than the BYD but at the moment I just I'm not entirely sure this is a robot the BYD seal is a car does that make sense I feel like I'm driving a robot and it's not the most exciting robot I'm sorry Tesla fans but it's true the regen braking on this is rather good Lift my foot off the pedal, it will come down to a stop. Lovely. I love one pedal driving. So that makes me very happy in here. There is no head up display. So you do have to get used to seeing everything here, which I've, I've always been annoyed by that in a Tesla because you're always having to check your speed like this all the time. So you actually find out if you're going over the speed limit by the time it bongs rather than checking on the screen if that makes do you know what I mean so like if I'm on a 30 mile an hour road I will be driving and then as soon as I hear the bongs then I know I'm going over 30 whereas really it could do with some head-up display and then I can just see everything happening in front of me because it's better that way right so the model that we are testing here is what used to be called the standard range model and it's now just the plain old model 3 so now Tesla famously keeps its exact battery sizes secret but we are reliably informed that the pack in this new version is around 60 kilowatt hours it comes with a wltp figure of 318 miles and of course tesla's legendary drive efficiency so that means that you'll be looking at a real world figure of around 260 to 280 miles on a full charge not too shabby you'll also get full access to tesla's brilliant supercharger network which is not only one of the most reliable networks it's also one of the cheapest and easiest to use if you are new to electric or don't have the ability to charge at home this kind of thing really makes a difference. So going electric in a Tesla is still the easiest way to do it. So while we've been filming with this Tesla, uh, we are in the minuses. It is blooming cold here in the UK and we've been averaging around 3.24 miles per kilowatt hour. As for charging, this version of the Model 3 peaks at 170 kilowatts on DC and has an 11 kilowatt AC charger. Now Tesla doesn't do vehicle to load, so if you like the idea of using the main battery to power stuff, you're out of luck I'm afraid. Another ace up the sleeve of the Model 3 is the battery preconditioning system. So if you're navigating to a Tesla supercharger site, the car will heat up the battery as you get close to it. So it means that you get top speeds as soon as you plug in. I'll be honest, I'm trying, I'm, I'm doing my best to see what it is about this thing that everyone loves so much. And I think the main thing is just the superchargers, isn't it? Because everything else is just a bit... Like I think of modern electric cars now and the design and the interior of a lot of these cars are so exciting. Is this exciting me? No, it's not. It's not, I'm not excited in this. I don't feel that excited by this car, apart from the fart noises. <laughs> so stupid. Okay. <laughs> oh, so stupid, I love it. <laughs> Okay, superchargers and fart noises. There we go. That's what makes this car great. <laughs> now, I first drove the Seal in Germany, and this is the first time I've really been able to see how it copes on British roads. It really impressed me when I drove it in Germany. The weather there that day was absolutely dreadful. It was tipping it down. And I was in the all-wheel drive version, which just held the road brilliantly. Now this is the entry level design model, so it's just rear wheel drive and the good news is it really impresses me too. It's punchy enough, it's got 308 brake horsepower as opposed to the 523 brake horsepower that the all wheel drive has. 
and it does take a rather more sedate 5.9 seconds compared to that car's 3.9 seconds to do 0 to 62 but there's still enough power when you need it for overtaking or pulling out of junctions now this does without the fancy adaptive dampers that come with the all-wheel drive model the ride quality though is still really good i actually think it's a lot better than the model 3 um, and whilst it's a heavier car, it does float over bad surfaces surprisingly well. Now when it comes to speed, it's faster than the Tesla, just by a smidgen, but the Tesla does have more torque and it really does feel like that, but the ride quality isn't as nice. Um, however, this is a heavier car as I said, and you do feel that slightly in the steering. Um, the Model 3 is just a bit more direct to place on the road. Now you do get options to play around with the setup of the car. You can alter the steering, uh, the suspension to suit your preferences. Sports mode does make the steering feel a little more direct, but um, I still do just prefer the standard settings or even eco mode, which I'm in now. It just seems to suit the setup of the car much more. One thing though that is irritating me in this car, just as it did in the car I drove in Germany, is regenerative braking. You can play around with it, but even in the strongest setting, I'm just not able to get true one pedal driving, which is a bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, the Model 3 completely trounces it um, on that. As much as I hate to give points to Nicola, she definitely gets them on regenerative braking. Um, I've been pondering, actually, as well, which version would I go for? Would I go for this? Or would I pay a bit more and go for the all-wheel drive with just that really brilliant handling and extra performance? And I think um, if you could stretch to it and the monthly payments weren't too much, I would be tempted to go for the all-wheel drive over this. However, this has really pleasantly surprised me. Um, it drives really nicely and yeah, it's, it's definitely a car I could get in and live with every day. Oh, one, one other area where it really trounces the Model 3 is in comfort. These seats are comfy, really comfy and the ride quality is, is nice as well. I think the Model 3 is like the equivalent of a cool Scandi piece of furniture. You know, I could look at it in the store and think it looks lovely and then bring it home and actually I just want to go and sit in my real favourite armchair again and in that rather bad analogy, the seal is my favourite armchair. Yeah, this is a car that I would just want to get up every day and go for a drive in because it's comfy. Uh, and maybe I'm getting old, but comfort matters to me. Oh, God, I never thought I'd hear the day when I said that. Now, one thing worth pointing out is that when I drove this car on the launch, it was rather vocal. It binged and it bonged, and it wasn't the most relaxing car to drive. But I have good news, BYD has listened and they have, I think the official line is softened the sound it makes. Um, very, very good thing though, whatever it is they've done to it, because it's definitely not as bingy and bongy today. Another thing I need to get off my chest, and this is not about the seal, it's about the Model 3, is that I can't stand the buttons on the steering wheel all for turning left and right. And I can't stand the slider in the screen. Um, honestly, those steering wheel buttons are fine, until you need to do like a quick left and a right because you end up in a situation where your steering wheel is upside down and you don't know which way you need to press the button and it's all really awkward. I am just not a fan of that at all. Listen, I'm all for stripping stuff out of cars. You know, the less parts there are in, um, of course, the less expensive they become, but also the more sustainable they are. But goodness me, please bring an indicator back. I mean, I just think that's madness. Um, and the swipey thing for, you know, go and, and reverse. Nah, just not working for me. Don't know what Nicola thinks of it, but that's my rant over. Oh, just as I'm pulling back into our filming area, efficiency. It's not a very fair test because I've not been in the car that long today and it is freezing. Um, it's like minus two, minus three. But I'm actually quite impressed with efficiency. Official range is about 350-ish miles on a full charge. And I'm getting, I reckon, around 290, 295, considering it is absolutely freezing and I've got everything on, heated, whatever I can heat. I think that's not bad, but we will report back on that at a later date. 
The Seal comes with a bigger battery pack than the Tesla at 84 kilowatt hours. It also has a longer official WLTP range of 354 miles. That's compared to the Tesla's 318. It features BYD's famous blade battery construction, which incidentally has picked up an award at our 2024 Electrifying Car of the Year Awards for innovation. That blade construction makes it incredibly strong and hard wearing. Like Tesla though, it uses LFP or lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is known to be more robust and more tolerant of being rapid charged on a regular basis. While the official range is longer and it has a bigger battery, the difference in real world range isn't quite so big. You see, the Tesla is more than 300 kilograms lighter and that is a lot of extra weight to be lugging around. In the BYD, on a very, very cold day, as I said, I was getting around 290 miles of driving range. Now, interestingly, the BYD uses an 800 volt charging system, but it doesn't offer the incredible speeds that Hyundai, Kia and Porsche do with their 800 volt systems. DC charging tops out at just 150 kilowatts. That means it doesn't recharge as quickly as the Tesla. Because the Tesla has a smaller battery and is more efficient, you'll be spending longer at the charger with the Seal than you will with the Model 3. Like the Model 3, AC charging peaks at a lowly 11 kilowatts, which does seem a bit mean these days, and we'd like to see it being 22. Okay, decision time. This is going to be tough, I think, because uh, let's look at the Tesla first. It is right. cheaper, it is actually more efficient, ish, only marginally though. Um, it is uh, quick to charge, mm. and of course it comes with access to the supercharging network. We know what a massive advantage that is. We shouldn't be saying that that is an advantage. It should all be brilliant, but if you do long distances, the supercharging network is something else. Yeah. Um, it also has loads of storage in space. It's really good. And I think actually that interior build quality now is so much better. However, the indicators. I couldn't buy it because of the indicators. <laughs> the buttons on the steering wheel. No. You, no. Get, you get used to them. But when you have to do a left and a right, it's been designed for roads in America where you just go straight okay. for ages. Okay. When okay. you do a left and a right, Let's let me just show you and look at the steering wheel upside down right. and you can't find. Let's move on All from right. indicators. Sorry. Okay, look, when the seal was announced, it was exciting because we thought what? finally there will be a car that can give the Model 3 a run for its money. And actually, I think it does give it a run for its money, you? even though if it is a bit too much money, <laughs> if it's a bit cheaper and less on the monthlies, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, on its own, though, it's stylish, it's comfortable, it rides nice, it drives nice, it's fun. It does. Oh, it looks lovely. Oh, it's pretty great, actually. Should we do the thing, just because we like doing the thing? Let's do the thing. Okay, we're going to do the thing, which is we are going to say, after three, in a completely scientific way, <laughs> which one we would want to take home. Okay. Uh, and bearing in mind that that is slightly more expensive than that this, is so you're going to have to spend more on it. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Ready? Yep. Go on, you do it. One, two, three. Seal. Seal. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I didn't think we were both going to say that. I'm proud of us. Oh. We agree on something. We do. That's nice. Okay, who's L driving? Me. No, I want to drive. Okay. You're too fast. <laughs> <laughs> too fast. Now, before you head anywhere, please do take a look at the other videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe and switch your notifications on.